Hey, I wasn't planning on making such a video, but I have a free evening on my hands and I thought it needed to be said. So I quit ESO. I mean, I, I quit ESO over a month ago, as in the last time I logged in, but I haven't been playing for quite longer. Literally just logging in to do daily crafting and that's about it. As for the reasons I quit, let's start with number one, uh, the garbage balance and class and skill changes. I haven't seen a good patch in god knows how long, and <laughs> I don't think I ever will. I, I thought firing Robo would help. I genuinely thought Robo was the root of all the bad changes uh, that happened to ESO, but no, turns out he wasn't. Turns out he was blamed erroneously by all of us. Turns out he was just a scapegoat, because all of the changes that hit live with elsewhere are garbage from a PvP perspective. Anyways, I'd like to specify that. I'm talking from a PvP perspective there. Uh, I know the PvE healing changes are actually pretty okay and the healer sustain is really good right now with the changes to blood altar and the orb thingy, but from a PvP perspective it's like that dot metas, trash, like the... <laughs> they still haven't fixed the streak bug, like that. that's also, that, that that's literally one of the reasons that made me quit. <laughs> so yeah, anyways, uh, but yes, like there, there's absolutely... Uh, no direction uh, when it comes to their like changes or whatever uh, like one update they buff liquid lightning the other they nerf it like there, <laughs> there's absolutely zero forethought or, or any kind of thought put, in, put into these updates so yeah there's that um, number two faction locks like it, it really ruined pvp for me my main is a dc and to get the volunteering achievements, I had to be locked out of the campaign for 30 days. Even though I only play on EP, PvP anyways, with my friends, because everyone's EP. And then, <laughs> the last time ever I logged into PvP, um, it was 3pm, and the map was entirely red. And they had volunteering, and they had amp, like, literally every single keep and resource was red on the 30 day campaign. And there was nothing to do. Like, <laughs> I tried chasing a couple of DC randoms that hadn't logged off yet, but it's not PvP, it's garbage. Like, when that used to happen, I used to, I just used to relog it, it just used to go in DC and just try to find small scale or 1vx fights, but now I can't. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't know why they implemented faction lock. I mean, I know, I know why, it's just to please a whiny uh, for a minority and those couple of middle-aged role players uh, that fab to Queen Iren and think faction locking is great and you know alliance pride and everything when literally fighting for the alliance brings you nothing there's absolutely nothing tied uh, to the alliance score or whatever like whatever campaign wins the alliance doesn't matter you'll get one more reward at the end of the 30 day campaign that's it and it's purple jewelry so like it's not worth it. There's absolutely no point in having pride in your alliance beyond just sad role playing. So yeah. I mean, when else were launched, you could actually set the seven day campaign as your home on all characters and then play on the only active campaign, so the 30 day CP one, but they hot fixed it. So now even if you set all of your characters home on the seven day, you'll still be locked on one faction on the 30 day CP one, which is the only campaign with some action. Like, two or three years ago, uh, back when that the stupid dragon names used to be called Hadrus, uh, at least for the seven day one, uh, there used to be action. Like, I used to be a full time student by, like, during that time. So I used to log in, uh, like, randomly at random hours, like 1 a.m., 5 a.m. sometimes after finishing cramming for an exam, uh, 3 p.m., 1 p.m., doesn't matter. Anyways, the, the, and I used to play on the 7 day campaign and there was always action. There wasn't much of it, but it was decent and varied enough to keep me entertained. And now there's nothing. Now the 7 day campaign is dead. Like, I, I tried going there um, among the last times I logged in and there was nothing. I tried sieging a keep, nobody came. Uh, I tried taking resources. 2 AD showed up, like 2 CP300 AD that just kept coming back again and back again because there was nothing else to do other than fight me and that's it. <laughs> I only met 2 other players on the 7 day campaign at 3pm 
in July, which again, like holidays, season, I don't know. One would expect to have more influx of players during the summer months, but clearly not. So yeah. So yeah, that kind of ruined PvP for me. Like, anyways, number three for the reasons I quit is the lack of communication from the devs, which again is nothing new. I mean, sure, they posted a roadmap or whatever about how they're gonna totally fix performance, even though they haven't in the past five years. So I sincerely doubt it's gonna change now. If they do, I'm, I'm going to take back my words and apologize, even though it doesn't really matter, but like, I, I really, really, really doubt they're going to fix performance. Um, yeah, it's been garbage since the lightning patch when they introduced their anti-botting system or whatever, which clearly works so well, judging by the bot trains in Grafwood and Reaper's March or any starter zone, but anyways, and the lightning patch was in 2014 as far as I know, so yeah, they, 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 they broke it almost after release and it's been garbage since, and they won't fix it. Hell, they haven't been able to even fix the crashes they introduced with the... I don't know the name of this uh, DLC. The third dragon one, um, the, the one that released in August, uh, the, the crashes they introduced in Cyrodiil, even after releasing a hotfix designed to specifically fix crashes they introduced, it's still not fixed. People still crash more so than normal during prime time in Cyrodiil, so yeah, I really don't have faith in their capabilities of fixing performance in general. Um, so yeah, and they aren't really clear about uh, the upcoming changes or what is the general direction of the changes. It's like, you know, one patch you buff Liquid Lightning, the other you nerf it. Some changes are completely out of the blue, just like the nerf to Major Expedition across the board. Or I don't know the change to surge, um, yeah, like some, some or the change to destructive reach, like some changes are just completely out of nowhere, and the devs don't really explain well why they do this. It's like I'm sure most people would at least understand the reasoning if there was any, or at least if they were communicating, <laughs> but they aren't. I, I literally know more about uh, the lead combat designer VSO Brian Wheeler, wheelchair for short. Uh, I know more about his sex life, thanks to his oversharing streamer girlfriend, Classic Katie, than I do about the like in-game related changes or the reasoning behind their combat changes. Like, <sighs> I know all about his ass, I know all about where he likes to come, I know all about how he likes to get his cock sucked, and I'm sorry for being gross, but that's, that, that's literally what she posts. Um, I know more about this than I do about the game I like and the the changes, the, like the upcoming changes and the thoughts behind them, so yeah, like, please Brian, I don't want to know about your ass, just just give me a reason why you fucking nerf Sorks. But yeah, like, jokes aside, I mean, Sorks aren't, um, I actually wouldn't know if they're bad or not, because as I said, I haven't played in a month and a half, but they weren't exactly really good when I quit, so. There's that. Um, and finally, I mean, like, I used to have those moments where, like, you know, just the, the gar like, PvP was garbage, the balance was garbage, like, <laughs> but what kept me playing ESO were, like, the storylines, you know, but now I don't even think those are good. Uh, I haven't enjoyed a DLC or a chapter, or however they call it, like, since Merkmire. And to be honest, even before, I mean, Somerset was just boring and predictable, and I really didn't like what they did with the high elf architecture. Um, it was way too discount Disneyland for my taste, compared to what's written in the lore, you know? So, yeah, and to be fair, like, even the Morrowind storyline was really bad. But hey, at least I had a sense of nostalgia, you know? Like, Clockwork City was good, but it had some pacing issues. But I mean, the storyline itself was okay. And after that, like, I don't know. I remember I used to be hyped for, like, Thieves Guild or Dark... Hell, even Dark Brotherhood. It wasn't that great in the end, except that one storyline about the Sweet Roll Killer. But, I don't know, I had fun playing it. Like, just playing through the storylines and the DLC and the quests and stuff, like, beyond endgame PvE and PvP, so... I don't know, it's, like, yeah. I mean, I, I don't regret playing it, so it gave me, like, friendships, great moments, hell, even a relationship, but... Um, yeah, I won't be coming back 